Yeah. We're going to start on time. Maybe we'll end a little earlier. Yeah, I went to elementary and high school there. Welcome to the Transportation Committee of Community Board 7. Uh, we have a bunch of things on the agenda for tonight. I'm Howard Yaris. This is Andrew Alpert. We're co-chairs of the committee. And we'll start off with a presentation from the New York City Department of Transportation regarding um, new protected bike lanes. Do you need the screen? I do. Yes. You do, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really really when I went to university. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, um, New development there. I can't remember what it was called, but it's like two big towers. Was, was it on the lake? Or was it yeah, on the lake. Yeah. I grew up at Jackson. Um, you know what Jackson Towers is? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Nice yeah. Thank you. Do your parents live in Jordan? No, my parents live in. I would love to say heaven, but probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Maybe she called. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 actually, I'm going to a wedding. There's a lot of family there. So. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Pretty much. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Good. There's a little bit of overlap between the two. Okay. All things considered, I'm glad we Got some copies for you. Oh, thank you. First one. Hello. Is <coughs> we have a focus on this? A little blurry. I've I seen it. Need more. Hey. hey. Do you have enough? I can share. Okay. Great. Five, six, 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 you've got a quorum. Yeah. So, so we may have It's a good thing. Yeah. Part Keyboard. of my role is to be redundant and, and, and I do it well. Can you say the same thing over and over? <laughs> it's just like deja vu. Deja vu. It's like deja vu again. <laughs> Are we ready? Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> this is a fun committee. Right, you're live. <laughs> I'm live? Okay. Okay, I'm going to begin then. Uh, hi there, everyone. My name is Patrick Kennedy. I'm a project manager with the bicycle program of New York State DOT. And I'm, uh, I have two presentations tonight. The first, wait, so I'm going to walk around a bit. Is that okay with live? That's fine. Live that way? All right, good. Uh, and we have two presentations for you uh, tonight. The first is a uh, proposal for 8th Avenue and Columbus Circle for bicycle safety improvements. So first, a bit of background about cycling in general. Uh, in New York City, cycling has been uh, growing mentally in the recent years. Uh, we have huge growth across uh, uh, in daily cycling in New York City itself, huge growth in biking to work in Manhattan, uh, huge growth in the number of bikes that are crossing our 50th Street. Uh, we have a, a screen line count we do there every year. Uh, so there's been immense growth uh, in, in bicycle trips all across the city. When you say this, what's your value system? Is it from 1,000 to 1,500? It, de it depends on what no, what number you're looking at. Um, Let's well, not have questions. All the numbers are on the chart. Let's not have questions. Let's so, just have the presentation. There won't be yeah, okay. time for questions. Okay. Uh, for instance, uh, City Bike, which is uh, in the City Bike system itself, there are regularly 70,000 trips uh, per day in, in the City Bike system. Uh, the total number of trips that uh, have occurred down City Bike uh, has been growing. It's up to 16 million in our most recent year. And then looking at sort of the warm weather season from April to September in 2017, uh, there were 2.4 million trips that started or ended in CP4. 3.3 million that started or ended in CB5, and then one, an additional 1.3 million that started or ended here in CB7. <laughs> so talking about uh, the bicycle network uh, development that has happened in, in this particular area around uh, 8th Avenue and Columbus Circle, uh, we of course have the Hudson Greenway, that's a little bit out of frame on, this, on that map, but along the, uh, the Hudson River, uh, 8th and 9th Avenue, and then uh, the counterparts Columbus Avenue and Amsterdam Avenue, uh, and then Broadway, south of Columbus Circle itself. Uh, but at least, so we have all that that green on that map that represents the protected lanes that we've uh, we've uh, installed over recent years. Uh, so, yeah, I'm sorry. Hmm? 
sorry, I'm just trying to stay out of everyone's way. Uh, there is uh, uh, a, a link we're trying to make here that the 8th Avenue currently ends at uh, 56th Street. Uh, Becky Lane ends there, and uh, that's what we're talking about. Uh, 8th Avenue from 56th up to Columbus Circle. So 8th Avenue itself, uh, Division Zero Priority Corridor, uh, has uh, very high numbers uh, for uh, what's called people who are killed or seriously injured uh, per mile. Um, in this short section, uh, thankfully there have, there have been no fatalities, um, but yeah, Division uh, uh, 8th Avenue is definitely uh, part of our Vision Zero action plan. It's, it's, it's a high priority for us to make conditions safer on the avenue itself. Talking about the safety of uh, protected bike lanes, this is what we're proposing for uh, for this corridor here. Um, so this this slide looks a little bit different from previous ones I, I've, I have shown in previous years, but the uh, the gist of it is that when we install a protected bike lane on the street, uh, crashes and injuries go down for everyone across the board. So the total amount of injuries goes down, the uh, amount of people who are uh, injured in, in motor vehicles or pedestrians that goes down. Uh, you may notice the cyclist injuries go up slightly in that chart. However, they're on the corridors we studied in the places where we have protected bike lanes. Uh, the 3% increase in cyclist injuries is combined with a 61% increase in bicycle volumes. So there are far more cyclists on, on the roads than there, there were in the, in the before time. Uh, so even though the numbers, itself, itself, uh, the numbers themselves go up slightly for the injuries, the amount of people who are biking goes up uh, far more. Uh, if, if to look at this on sort of a micro level instead of a macro level, uh, the cyclist volumes on Columbus Avenue increased by 30% uh, after we installed the uh, protected bike lane, and the total injuries went down by about 30%. So um, basically, this is our most effective tool when we're, when we're trying to make the street safer, is putting in a protected bike lane. Uh, it does a lot of great things for everyone, regardless of whether you're a pedestrian, a motorist, or a cyclist. So. Getting into the specifics of the proposal, we're talking about 8th Avenue, north of 56th, up to Columbus Circle. 8th Avenue specifically, what happens there now? Um, is there a pointer or anything? There is. Okay, just I could go up there and you point, but yeah. I'm trying to meet him. Get closer. Perfect distance from it. You are. This is really uh that looks nice. Yeah. Usually they're wider. Yeah. yeah, but I think people. You want to stand there? Hmm? I mean, I can just stand right next to it. I was hoping there'd be a point here. Well, yeah. it's community board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They but the community helped you. Mm -hmm. She's looking for one. That doesn't mean to find one. Why don't we just keep yeah. going? Yeah, I yeah. Okay, I'm, I'll just get a, I'll get a close one. Okay. okay, so currently, what cyclists have to do. On 8th Avenue, once they exit the Texas Lane 56, uh, there's a buffered bike lane between 56 and 57. <coughs> and then they are supposed to cross to the other side of the street and then proceed in a shared lane between 57 and 58 up to the circle itself. So that we're basically asking them to leave this protected lane, go into a, like a standard uh, buffered bicycle lane here, cross the street, and then proceed with, mixed with traffic up to 58. Our proposal. They, they don't, by the way. Yeah. No, I get up and walk. Mm -hmm. Is to extend that protected lane from 56 all the way up to the entrance of the circle itself. Our proposal calls for pedestrian refuge islands at intersections all the way up to 58. Also, for the turn. The left turns at 57th Street here. We'd be installing uh, what's called a split phase, which means we give cyclists and pedestrians protected time to cross the street here. Right, go back there. Patrick, you want me to sit? Sure, yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah. I can um, do the presentation for you. 
I got sorry. That's a very functional. Okay. Yeah. So uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. So having a split phase here, meaning that the bikes and pedestrians get to go, and then the left turns, which are held, then go after everyone crosses here. Also, this looks a little bit different from our normal split phase because there's an island <coughs> right there. Uh, this is just because we actually need to have a, a much higher volume turn here than on your, your typical uh, Manhattan avenues, uh, where we have this treatment at like 34th Street or 14th Street or 23rd. And we actually didn't have as much through volume. So we're able to, instead of doing uh, our typical design, we have a longer turn bay here. We're able to keep the parking. And then we only have three through lanes instead of four. So it just ended up working out for, for the design uh, that way. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that is the gist of the protected lane proposal up to the circle is to continue the protected lane on the west side of the street, have a split base here at 57, which gives bikes and pads a uh, separated uh, time to go between them and left-running vehicles, and then the left-runners will, will go. So that is the proposal. Next. Yeah, next. All right. Um, talking about the circle itself, currently what happens right here, and that's, and now this is north. So uh, currently what happens is you enter the circle here. 8th Avenue on the east side of the street. So we've asked people to cross, they're, they're across, they're over here. And then basically have to make your way to here through the turning vehicles that are turning against you or here with the turning vehicles. There's a little bike line here. And then again, have to deal with the turning vehicles again going up into uh, the Central Park West. Uh, so basically, we're asking the cyclists to deal with vehicles that are exiting the circle in multiple locations. So our proposal, we're switching cyclists from the, the east to the west side. And now they enter on the different side of the street. And we create a dedicated bicycle space around the inside of the circle itself. We're able to do that pretty much by shrinking down the existing travel lanes here. And capitalizing on some of the buffered space that exists, that currently exists <coughs> on the inside of the circle. We have this protect of the so this dedicated cycling space around here. And then using the existing signal timing, cyclists can either go down this way to Broadway, cross out and go this way to Central Park West, or continue on the inside, or actually take this to get to the Broadway. So, so you cross in the crosswalk uh, with the bicycle? You yeah, cross you, with you, the you'd be crossing with the pedestrians. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so very, sure. do all yeah. the way I, I do anyway, but that's fine. Very importantly, mm -hmm. how much time is given here? Because as you know, there's several bus lines that are coming southbound there, mm -hmm. traffic and, and everything. So how much, what's the split timing like? Well, we're not proposing any, any uh, no timing changes here because you're entering on um, the basically the left side instead of the right side. So you're, you're not on the side where the vehicles are turning to. So it will be just the existing signal timing that, that 8th Avenue gets to enter the, uh, the circle itself. So yeah, we're not proposing any changes in lanes or signal timing with this. It's all geometric. We're all we're we're basically claiming this space on the inside and creating spaces on the outside, capitalizing on the existing space we have in the circle to provide a, a, a safer connection to get down here to get up to Central Park West. Uh, so yeah, that is that is if a, if a bicycle enters here mm -hmm. and it's, their definition is here. Can they go this way or must they go clockwise? Um, well, the, the, they are supposed to go clockwise. Clockwise. Just kind of clockwise. Oh, so yeah. 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 With traffic. That's like, it's with not traffic. that much further. With traffic. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't happen that often. Yeah, that's kind of clockwise. It's, yeah. Is the circle going to be widened or are you using space that's already? We're using existing, existing space in the circle. Tech. Can you go back one slide? So we have these buffered areas here. And a lot of these, like these buffered areas here and some here and here, where we're using all these this existing buffered space, we're making a better use of it by uh, sort of collecting on the inside. We're also narrowing the lanes slightly so that we're we're able to maintain that space all the way around. 
Um, but yeah, with the result is we're able to, to create all this dedicated settling space on the inside and then the, the spots to make the connections. The lanes on 8th Avenue are now slightly too, it looks like. Is that right? Uh, they are. If you go to the next slide, Ted. Oops. Like the next one. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're roughly what they were before. I mean, with, with all these different proposals, we have to check to make sure that any like vehicle, emergency vehicle, like a fire truck that made the turn before, or a bus that made the turn before, can make the turn in the proposed condition. So, yeah, the, the, the lanes may all be slightly, uh, what, you know, they were or you know, might be like, differently aligned, but everyone who is making those existing movements can make those movements in there. What, what do you have um, separating the cyclists from the, uh, on the loop? Wait. In inside here, it's yeah. it's it's pink. No, no bollards, nothing. Uh, no, just um, we. This is about as much space as we could possibly get, <clears throat> which is right on the the edge of something where we could have vertical separation if it were straight. The problem is it's a curve, mm -hmm. which doesn't really do well with when you're looking at the the distances that like we're talking about for mm -hmm. maintenance. Stages. It looks like there's a buffer of some. There there is yeah there is a painted buffer. Uh, how, how wide is it? Three feet. The three foot buffer? No, sorry, no that's, that's uh, more like five, five feet. How wide is the bike lane? Six. And we couldn't put even plastic bollards to a... Uh, it's, it's, we're, we're looking at any option we can for some type of vertical separation. The problem is that n nothing we have is, going, is really going to fit the the space we have because it is on, on a circle, it's on a curve. What about what they use on highways? The, it's raised about an inch, mm -hmm. and if a, a car veers onto it, they just feel a rumble. Mm -hmm. You mean uh, rumble strips? Yeah. No. Not rumble strips, <laughs> but you, on a highway, they have these little, they're usually reflectors. also reflective. Yeah. What are, yeah, and they're like an inch and a half inch high. Higher than that, but Probably whatever. Is. And if you really notice, you need yeah. to. Like you have on 7th Avenue. In, in, I don't, I don't know. You do? You don't, know, you don't know about those? About, I mean, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, no, the, um, the issue with those is they're, they're still going to get uh, like hit by plow blades or. Mm. But they're low enough so that the plow blade, I don't know. No, plow blades are great. The, the, the question is do they increase the safety anyway? But I think let's let's so, so, even question. these guys? Hmm? Yeah. No, that's. that's those so, what they get plowed over? Those so, are directly in the path of maintenance vehicles as well as the curve. Mean is meaning plows because there are no plows are other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be difficult for a plow to get over. Okay, let's keep going. Okay. Uh, next slide. Well, that's the end. Uh, oh. <laughs> so, uh, just to, to summarize for pedestrians, we're shortening crossing distances on 8th Avenue, approaching the circle, uh, common traffic, and providing a uh, uh, protected time for them to cross here on, on, on the, the west side of 57th Street. For cyclists, uh, extending their protected bike lane up to the circle, provided de providing dedicated cycling space within the circle, uh, and then a clear bike routes to exit the circle itself. Mm -hmm. And then for motorists, maintaining the adequate vehicle capacity that existed before and maintaining the, all the movements that the, that the vehicles were able to make before. And um, when, when would you anticipate this happening? Uh, it, it, would it be possible this season would be sometime before the end of end of the year. And as Columbus Circle is the purview of three community boards, have mm -hmm. you heard from four and five yet? We presented to four and five. Yes. And I think they all are having their board meetings okay. the same either this this coming week like us or the following mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. It was it was met with people generally liked it. We don't expect to do it. If you want to take board questions um, first, yeah, Ken. Um, well, as a, as a cyclist who's been terrified of going through Columbus Circle for many years, this this looks much much better. <laughs> um, what's that? Sorry, just mumbling. Oh, it's your turn oh, to talk. Okay. I'm sorry. She was green. <laughs> um, uh, um, I have two two questions. Um, one is most people are going to be heading north on Central Park West. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm concerned about the signal timing for cyclists once they get onto the, uh, the circle and they, you know, how are they going to safely cross traffic to get onto Central Park West? Are they going to have adequate time to make that 
now that there's a couple of possibilities for what you're describing. Can we go back to that slide that shows the circle in detail? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And you get a Central Park West, you can either stay on the inside and come up and then use that to get over, or you can walk this way and go this way and that way. Uh, so you have choices. So you or, can't you can't sort of go to the 12 o'clock area no, and, no, and no, go over no. there. Yeah, well, that's the same way you go. Exactly. Are you doing but, the but presentation we're... again at full board? Huh? Are you doing the presentation again at full board? I, I don't know, are we? No, we usually go and attend the full board. Right. But the, the, the idea is to treat um, as much as possible um, cyclists like drivers. Mm -hmm. and. The, um, it seems like you're treating them like pedestrians, um, and if you choose the exiting at the three o'clock position, you're all of a sudden um, you're not in the protected area. And, um, riding with pedestrians, and, and you're yeah, and riding with pedestrians. You never hear. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, we so I guess what I'm suggesting is why not put a signal for cyclists so they can proceed up to Central Park West right at the twelve o'clock. Meaning, up to here. right there. Yeah. Uh, so, with 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 this, we're we're that would require just doing a, a lot more signal work in the rest of the circle. The problem is, it would it's not one circle; it's one, two, three, four, five intersections that are always in a circle shape. So, making one change here means you have to change the entire thing. Um, I mean, this is something that we are. Uh, I mean. We have we have collected data and we are analyzing that to look at possibilities for that in the future because we wanted to make any kind of improved tech connection out on Central Park West or on Broadway, it would probably require us to do some more significant work to the circle itself to facilitate that connection. But currently, uh, no, we don't have any plans. Okay, for my, my other question was, had you thought about allowing cyclists just to go straight across the circle? Inside here? Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. That's how they go now to avoid the, the circle. Right, right. Just, just to follow up on Ken's uh, question, when you when you reach this point, yes, and traffic is stopped and pedestrians and bikes can go this mm -hmm. way, what is the signal like here? So at that point, when these vehicles are held and you're crossing, yes, these vehicles are going. Yes. Oh, yeah, wow. Kind of hard to see, but there's They're a little going. stop bar right there. So you'd be coming across They're here and waiting there. again and then going. And that's, that's what happens so. yeah. right now to pedestrians. That's basically how the pedestrian movement works now, and that's actually the answer to why we couldn't get <laughs> a signal there, is that that would muck up traffic. Because you have all those 59th Street vehicles flushing through at that point, and you need to keep them moving. So you wouldn't be able to stop. Well, I'm just saying that for me as a cyclist, I would probably get to the the way I would get to Central Park West is get to the top of the circle and then look through a break and drive. Well, you're a renegade. No, I mean, no I think I just, I'm, I'm a pretty conservative cyclist. I'm also would probably do the same, and this yeah. doesn't change my life in any way. I would still probably be able to do that. So which way, would, if you're going to Central Park West, how would you get there in this plan? In this plan, you, exactly what Patrick said. Well, there are two options. Cross would you cross over, cross east, and then go? I would around the circle, or would you? Yeah, I would cross on 59th and then go up. That's what I would do. Yeah. Uh, Great. Um, um, as a cyclist who stops riding by, you're walking it at like 56, um, going up Eighth Avenue, and then I walk all the way to the city bike. It just they just did they just move the city bike location? Where is the city bike location? I always get a little. It's on Broadway. Oh, there. There used to be one on Central Park South. Not kidding. There used to be. Okay. So, okay. So that's my challenge. Is I'm going to be on the west side of Eighth Avenue, and I'm going to want to be on the east side of Broadway. And I'm not quite sure how I'm. I'm going to get out so I can walk it again on, on the sidewalk because that's the way to. Next question. Okay. Are you doing anything more of the circle? Uh, the reason not, I give my bike in is because there's no protected bike line, and I 
and those streets are too much for me to, to cross. There's but, a gap. You're right. There's a gap in the Central Park West bike lane between 60th and 62nd. There's mm -hmm. nothing there. Mm -hmm. Are you putting something in? Uh, not as part of this proposal, though that is something so that. Yeah, it's just <laughs> bike lanes don't work, work if they're not continuous. Okay, and, just have I mean, and I have one more. There again. And I have one more, one more comment. Uh, where the bikes are supposed to continue straight on uh, on 8th Avenue to get to the inner circle, could you put some paint there to indicate the bikes are supposed to go that way? Yeah, that's like right there, where on here you see them. Will there be paint yeah. on the road? Like, green, can you green paint that? Indicator. Yeah, green paint that. I mean, this this is our our uh, I mean, typical intersection marking, which is I mean, it's, it's thermoplastic, it's white paint. Um, typically, we don't use uh, color paints in intersections. It doesn't last very long. But is it like? But there will be paint on the road. There will, there will be paint on the road. So it'll be clear to the cyclists where they go. Clear to the cyclists. Yeah. 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 If you were bike riding, you wouldn't see it. Yeah. 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 That was yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Guide signage is a position point. Is a going to be a part of this as well? Like so, people know where to bike and. No, Rich, did you have a hand up? Yeah. Overall, it's great, and it's actually. I didn't realize that bikes are supposed to cross over it. 56 or 57th Street, so I never I had. But I've basically been following this there. traffic pattern, not knowing that that wasn't. So mm -hmm. it's it's fabulous. Yep. Uh, my two concerns, which echo Ken, one is if there's any way of having any kind of protection because white paint doesn't keep cars out of bike lanes, and I'm worried. You know, as cars are going around, especially as the paint starts fading, uh, we're going to lose that that sense of it being a bike lane. The second is as I've done this, um, which has been my route. I've always done, as Ken says, of, you know, as you're getting to, say, 2 o'clock, you start looking for breaking traffic to cut through. So, yeah, yeah. yeah so, that's one of them. Yeah, about here. Okay. So, if you're coming here, if you get a, a head start in the light, mm -hmm. um, traffic's not always that heavy coming from 59th Street into the circle. Mm -hmm. You can usually find a way to get in and get a way in traffic so that you can come up this way or if you're going wow. to Broadway. I can't imagine anyone's going to go all the way around this way, yeah. especially as the paint starts fading. So mm -hmm. I, I think that idea is just never going to be used. Uh, this it'll one... Be, it'll be used by people yeah, sure. for, for whom having dedicated space really matters. If you're but then they would come this way. across that's five lanes of traffic... If I were riding on that sure. route, I would take You can do that. You go all the way around. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that too. Because I feel safer. Yeah. That feels really safe. And, and crossing it like up there, you can't always see the folks that are going to be zooming around the circle. Right. right. The thing is and it also, I wonder if this is two way. Number seven bus. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, that would yeah, be great if that was a two way. I just want to say this, this is great, but we talk about doing things piecemeal. Yeah. Like you said, that there's a gap in the bike lane between 60th and 62nd. Why? Why don't we just do it all at once? Why don't? It's just two bots. Why don't we just do it? Do it. I mean, we. <laughs> Do you know why that gap exists? Yeah, why does that gap exist? In the hotel and the hotel. Why does the hotel have a bike lane in front? No, it's got all parking. Should we get the park? The park needs the hotel. Yeah, the Trump Hotel is on the other side of the street. It makes no sense. Because you look at the parking pattern over there. We, we no, there's an angle police parking on the on the west side. I think it's on the east side. I think it's the Because it's one way and then Central Park West becomes One way should be easier to put in a bike lane. Yeah, it's much easier to put a bike lane in on a. Anyway, we've made our point, I think. Yeah, I'm just two couple of questions. Uh, in 2017, you said there, there were 16 million bicycle rides. Mm -hmm. How many uh, yellow cab rides were there there in that same period of time? We're talking about city bike trips. I know. How many cab trips? How many cab trips were there? Um, I'm not. A, I'm not. Well, you see, okay, okay that's, that's a problem, problem because you know you're just throwing numbers out. The second question okay. is: okay. Do you know what type what type of vehicle causes the most bicycle accidents? What type of vehicle causes the most? Right. Is it a sedan? Is it a taxi? Or is it a truck? I am not. I am not. I don't have the police department. It's truck. Okay. okay. So, so we because their visibility is not as good as the other two. So, so what happens is we, um, in a propaganda kind of a way, use words vehicles. The, the the image that people get are sedans, when that's really an incorrect assumption. 
And part of the problem that bicycle lanes create is that because the police aren't enforcing the parking laws, that's where the big problems come in because the truckers, which are up high, can't necessarily see the bikers, which are down low. So just, you know, okay. maybe, maybe as opposed to one day only talking about bicyclists, I think maybe the question of types of vehicles and how maybe to control them better might be something that you people might want to think about. Well, the most effective way of protecting cyclists is to separate them from traffic, which is what's going to say. It's uh, right. as somebody who works. You can't do that piece. We're, we'll have we're within the traffic time. operations so division of DOT, and we actually do like, very much so this whole plan is devised as a way to, we always start with vehicles, starting first. Every time we go out, every time, uh, all vehicles, all, all vehicles, that's exactly, it's not a plan, it's not a secret plan. We have data out there that has all the vehicles, including trucks, buses, and all that. Patrick himself, if I've seen him look at bus turns here, we do look at all vehicles. And in order to do that, in order to make this plan, that's always where we start. And then we look at the excess okay, space. We need to have the presentation. My second question is, do you know why on parkways it says passenger cars only? Robert uh, Moses is Wait, this is not this is not your lane to the side. The answer is the answer is because um, you couldn't see when you're driving a car, if there's a truck in front of you, you can't see through their front window. And so it becomes a hazard. And that's why Howard, there's a question back there. Okay. Well, no, no, no. We're, we we need to see we will have all the questions at the end of the presentation. Oh. We're in the middle of the presentation. We need to well, get to the end of the it. The other no, presentation is, is a different it's topic. So start. let's let's finish. Okay, okay. if it's on the Columbus Circle specifically, <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Read Ruby. At Community Board Four, there are two things that were highlighted that are important to me. One is a vertical demarcation between the bicycle lane and the car lane. I'm riding my bike. I can see all the paint on the ground, and I can see everything, and then I get hit by the car. When I'm in my car, I can't see the paint really, because I'm looking this way, and the paint's down there. Then when I hit the guy on the bike, it's a surprise. So I want to see the physical barrier between the bike lane and the car and the vehicle lane. And I understand it's difficult to explain to community board for the idea about when you know it's difficult to take them out and put them back in and I get it but that's a design problem and it's only it's a space shuttle level problem it's really a hard thing I agree with you but you got to solve it the second point <laughs> a, the gritty, point is, a gritty surface of some sort yeah. no you can't see a gritty surface I'm talking about a vertical it. element like a bump, it might be too late. by the time the car the hits the, the bump bumper strip or he hits the bike but he sees the vertical element and then maybe doesn't hit the bike. The second point is on 59th Street, your diagram has dropped out the bike lane that's on 59th Street. I don't know if it's Sharrow's or an actual bike lane, but you're just showing two lanes of traffic and comment was made about all the traffic headed eastbound, you've got to get through that intersection and that's why you can't have a, a, a crossing there. The bike lane, when I'm going east west on 59th Street to get to this circle, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get hit. I'm gonna get squeezed. I'm not gonna have any protection at all. So that's I'm important. Heading, heading this way. North from three o'clock. Coming coming into the circle and going this way. Right, you see you you you've got the green up a little higher. It starts mm -hmm. from scratch. Mm -hmm. And I think the way. point was there yep. that for some reason you have to have drop off area, so you're eliminating the bike lane. But what you're not showing is that actually bikes are coming on 59th Street headed west and going north. I mean, th this this area is is like this because we don't. This is not a space where if a bike is coming in here, we want them to linger at all. I'm talking about the space going around, taking a right turn off of 59th Street. On to Columbus Circle, right there. Yeah, right, right there. There's no, right there. I don't see any place for a bicycle. I, think a bus I see yeah, two so car yes. lanes or two vehicle lanes. You're right. You're right, right here. There's no space for a bicycle. Right. There's but space. A block, half a block to the right, I believe, there is a facility for a bicycle. 
headed west. No. Nope. I wish there was. Okay. There used to, come I back, swear there used to be. We'd so, love to have you come at back. Community Board 4, I thought it was discussed that there was. There is. Tonight, I hear that there is not. There I'm is confused. Not. There is not. There is not. There is not. There is not. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Can I come up and point to something? Sure. Please. Please. Sure. 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 My name is uh, James Miller. Um, I bicycle everywhere. And it's a, it's a great it's a great design. I think it could be better. It's like climbing Mount Everest and you're getting 100 feet to the top and you turn around. We have to finish it, make it better, stronger. And that is, it needs something here. You need the bike lane and me starting here just so it can get you into the uh, circle. And I think the bike lane would continue around this way. Similarly to these, going that way. So that way, that gets you into this, and then you can you can go around around here and create something that way. I'd much less try. Right. Not as much as it used to be, but standing but we need something and here yeah. because it, there's the bicycles just don't know where to go and how to. There's no bike that you lift down. Yeah. Correct, yeah. but there will be eventually. Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> so that's how we could do it. Yeah. Right now, there's a bike lane going north and central park west with a two block gap. So I think right. we should address that. Where first. do we yes, absolutely. The bike yeah. That's what I, that's what I'm talking about. There's go that extra bike. on this ninth avenue. From central park. Right. Go that extra distance. Go again and out. Go again. Tenth of a mile. Over here, and he brought up a very good point. And this is this is the fact that it's very very dangerous. And I'm a very good bicyclist. I'm very. I can be as aggressive as anybody else. Uh, and this area right here is incredibly dangerous. And you have to start the green here to go around. That's the primary goal is for safety of the bicyclist is the primary objective. Now what you're doing is trying to squeeze two lanes of traffic. Now if you have a bus right here, buses have to take wide turns. Now they can't because you have a, they have a car right here. He doesn't see the bicyclist coming around the corner. So he uh, takes a shorter turn, comes right into the curb. The bicyclist gets crushed because he hits the curb and then the bicyclist goes underneath the wheel. It's it's something that's just going to happen. happen. Is there uh, a um, is there a cross town um, protected bike lane anywhere near? No. no, not right now. No, not yeah. yet. We're trying. Um, <coughs> Does that happen? Uh, so a a there are a few. Same thing. Same thing here. There should be. Uh, it should continue oh, on for a little bit, you know, okay. 100 feet, 50 feet, you know, and that same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just it's to get just you in and out, out, out of the circle, mm -hmm. you know. But I, I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty good. You know? Okay, but that's the big one. Thanks. Let's try to move on to the next presentation. I just want to point information. This intersection is loaded with tourists yeah. who stand yeah. in the street, oh. have Richard, doing Richard, all sorts of crazy things. So just take that. There's always guys for rent bikes. I would yeah, say it's into yeah, a single yeah. lane and so forth. It's really, yeah. you know, it, it'd be a single car lane. That way you can get the green going around there. That tells any driver they have to stay out of the, they have to give space. Mm -hmm. you know, or, or chop off that area or something. We're not really anything out for the future, but chop that area this, that this is what we're proposing. This that's is the first step. Sidewalk is parks? Oh, okay. Okay. Sidewalk? All right. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, a quick point. I apologize for being late, so I won't rehash anything that's been covered. But I want to know if you uh, considered. Uh, I support the idea of going in the inner circle. Uh, I go through this intersection every day, so um, I'm usually not on my bike. I want to know if you considered, instead of exiting and then doubling back as you do across the sea of, of uh, cars. Um, to go up Broadway for a couple of blocks and then go over to Central Park West. To how is the point? Yeah. That's where the bike lane picks back up. Um, and I do I agree with those who, who express concern that no one's actually going to do this. Yeah. Um, and the three o'clock exit from the inner circle strikes me as a bad solution only because it would require its own phase of light and there aren't enough phases of the light to go through. So I'm wondering if you thought about going up the 61st east side of Broadway to 61st Street and then yeah. cutting across. Um, 
because the volume of traffic there he was two way. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. What do you mean? All right, um, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll say right there. Route. Just to 61st. But if you did that, the most direct route would obviously be yeah. like that. Yes. And there. Right. Yeah. And then, like, oh, and then you're going no, the wrong no, no, way. No, you can't go against the traffic circle. You well, have to go with it. Like you have a two way line. Go the other way. You have a two way line. Did you consider that? Is there a reason why that's bad? Can I address that for a second? Can I address that for a sure, second? Sure. This is a first step. It's what we're dealing with right now on the ground. We do realize that there's not only southbound issues, as you said, right there. We do ultimately, there are people going down Broadway, a lot of people going down Broadway that we have to deal with. But we have to take incremental steps. And as you guys know, we come back and we keep on talking about this stuff. And as far as going up Broadway, that would be part of the same dialogue. Ultimately, we've talked about all sorts of great things that could happen in the circle. This is the first step. We want to move forward with it quickly, and then hopefully we can get the momentum going and keep building off of what's out there, which we've been very successful in, in the past. The group should not be the enemy of the perfect. Howard, you, you were uh, the person the that actually not perfect. perfect. I always get that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Howard, you were the, the person who actually raised this issue many, many, many meetings ago. Are you satisfied with this as a first step? Absolutely. Yes. Enthusiastically. Do we do a resolution? Well, here, here's, we, so had a resolution. Oh, okay. we have a resolution on record of asking for this, but DOT, in order to go forward, needs us to approve the plan. So we need a resolution. Not. We've already approved that we want to buy Approving the proposal. We're just approving this particular proposal. I move to can approve we, this. Well, can we approve it with some of the provisos or some of the recommendations that have been brought up? Such as. Oh, yeah. Sure, you can. Okay, I, I would like to add to continue the bike lane between the, the gap, fix right. the gap between 60th and, and 62nd Street on Central Park Park. I'd like to add like, some sort so of. So, why don't we say after approving the proposal, CB7 also yes. suggests that yes. DOT. Yes. Yes. And put that language in. Physical protection around the circle, <laughs> improving the, the entrance at 59th Street. Yeah. Improving the entrance uh, westbound at 59th Street, yeah. which Mr. Miller was talking about. Our, our, is, is our purview in approving this proposal limited to the area that CB7 covers, or should we be commenting on the 8th Avenue part as well? Uh, we can comment. I, mean, I comment. think that's a major improvement. It's, it's a whole integrated uh, change. All right, so we'll just say the plan. The, the other boards were very happy. Okay. Any second? Second. second. Uh, so I have CB7 approves and also recommends closing the gap between 60 and 62nd on Central Park West. Now CB7 approves the plan as presented. Yeah, the new sentence. Then a new sentence CB7 program. also suggests. Suggests, yeah. Okay. CB7 also suggests, I think the first thing that everybody suggested was some sort of demarcation in, in the circle. Right. Physical. Some vertical, physical. Vertical. 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 vertical or physical demarcation. Okay. So physical protection of bikes on the inner bike lane uh, at Columbus Circle. Number two, closing the gap. On the bike lane between 60 and 62nd on Central, Central Park, Park West. Central and Central number Park three West. is. And number three is improving east, the entrance westbound at 59th Street for cyclists. Yeah. And Perfect. what about that? Do you want to call the question? Um, I think. And do we want to? <laughs> do we want a fourth of uh, making a better entrance for a south bikes yeah, southbound right. on Broadway to enter the bike lane? Yeah. The heck, get it all in there. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Call the question. All, all those in favor? All committee members in favor. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. All those opposed? Any abstentions? I think it's everyone here. Uh, Non-committee members, all in favor? Wow, a lot here. Three, five, six, wow. eight. Um, yeah, I've never used that. Yeah. <laughs> all those opposed? All those abstaining? The resolution passes. And now on to uh, great job, Patrick. Great job. Thank you. Great job.
Thank you very much. That helped a lot. We we did discuss it and we voted on it. This is supposedly um, a status, not a status. Yeah, so just report. a status. That's all it is. So we've already passed. So there's no resolution. So it's not this is the mouse for this. It's just it doesn't believe it. Um, so, Mia? This is a. Control L? It's control L. It's a control L. It the mouse is Yeah, but then it's a good thing to the mouse. I don't want so our, our next proposal is for Tampa Avenue and Amsterdam Avenue. Actually, I've got that. We'll on the way home. Ted, did you pass those out? Sure. sure. Yeah. So Tampa Avenue and Amsterdam Avenue between 52nd and 72nd Street. And this is also for a protected bike lane. So, yes. Yes, thank you. And uh, like the last presentation, we'll start with some background, uh, to talk about the issues on this corridor, and then uh, give you our proposal. Um, similar to pretty much these, this is the exact same slide, so short version of this for everyone in the room, we've already sat through it once. Um, more people are biking in New York, a lot of that is uh, city bike, city bike is very popular. Uh, there are, uh, this is our, our network here, that's what we're talking about. Uh, talking about 10th Avenue, between 52nd and 72nd, where the, or 10th Avenue to Amsterdam Avenue, is where the existing protected bike lane uh, picks up at 72nd Street. And so this involves uh, board four from, this is board four from 52nd down, yeah. to 59th, yep. and then CB7 from 52nd to 52nd. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And yeah, so currently we have a protected connection southbound on Columbus. This would be extending the protected connection uh, 10th and Amsterdam uh, in the north. And, and we also have a resolution on that that approved the bike lane from, 50, from 59th all the way through the end of the district. Okay. Well, like I, this is presented. Yes. 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 Um, talking about uh, the uh, the injuries and crashes that occurred on this corridor. Um, yeah, there have been uh, there were two cycles fatalities, one at 55th Street and one up at 72nd. Uh, it doesn't appear here, but these are more recent. Um, also, just 57th typically, also 66th, and up towards the bow tire, places where, where more crashes and injuries have, have occurred on this corridor. Um, so yeah, this is a place where we, we want to make some, some changes to improve safety. Can you just go back one short? Sure. Sure. Areas that don't have a, uh, a little thing here, uh, don't have a number, or it's just, it's just a number less than 10. It's, it's okay. just it's, it's it's the it's obvious that major westbound turns, for one reason or another, are the key to these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Um, next slide. So, um, talking about the corridor itself, uh, we did a speed study, found that 79% of vehicles uh, during the off peak times were, were speeding. Uh, of course, because we've got these four lanes with no designations in them, so you have unpredictable vehicle movements because any lane can suddenly become a turn lane. Uh, Long pedestrian crossings to cross the street, Amsterdam and or Kent is between uh, 60 to close to 70 feet wide subsections where it widens out a bit. Um, and then there's also no dedicated space for bikes, uh, so cyclists are of course riding the traffic. Uh, next slide. This is our protected bike lane slide. Uh, just to reiterate, this is our most effective safety treatment, and they work for everyone. It makes things safer for, for motor vehicle occupants, for pedestrians, and also for cyclists. Uh, next slide. So yeah, Amsterdam. Typically at 60, though, it gets up to about uh, about 70 feet in, in a couple of places. There are four full-time travel lanes, and then we also have these uh, rush hour lanes on on both sides of the street. So 
sometimes during the day the entire the entire roadway is just completely open. Um, peak when hour vehicle that? volumes. Excuse me. When was that? Just keep going. Okay. Um, uh, typical vehicle volumes range from about 1,200 to about 1,600 vehicles. Uh, for those of you in the room who were uh, with us for the Amsterdam presentation, uh, what was it, 2015? 2015. Uh, those vehicle volumes actually started around 1,600. Just to give you a bit of a comparison, that's because about 72nd Amsterdam uh, is also fed by Broadway, so you're getting the Amsterdam traffic plus the Broadway traffic. Below 72nd, uh, vehicle volumes are a little bit lower. Context. Our proposal uh, is to remove one of those travel lanes and to remove also removing the, the rush hour regulation, uh, installing a curbside bike lane, uh, floating parking out here so it's a protected bike lane, um, painted pedestrian islands at intersections. <coughs> so it would be shortening crossing distances for pedestrians and creating a protected bike lane along the west, uh, west curve. So is the parking lane on the left going to be a rush hour lane? Yeah, with, with okay. this one over here, yeah. uh, that, that would be preserving the existing rush hour regulations. We were looking at uh, what changes we, like we have a whole division that deals with parking. They do a lot of studies, they're, they're, they're very good at what they do. And uh, like we're, we are going to be, see, uh, I'll, I'll get to this in the proposal, we're going to talk about some of the regulations we would be modifying over here, but we keep the rush hour regulation currently. It is something we can definitely revisit. We just didn't want to make too many changes to the roadway at once. Uh, it's the signs are easy to change. So I figured we'd make that. Is, the, uh, is it 4 to 7 p.m. the rush hour regulation? I believe it's 4 to 7. It's also 7 to 10 and 4 to 7 on this side. I'm not mistaken. It's, it's, it's an a.m. as well? There is an, there's a, yeah, and I, I might be wrong about this, but there's a, there's a p.m. on one side and an a.m. and a p.m. on the other, and I believe it's Fort Columbus at the a.m. Side. Yeah. Uh, next slide. So it's confusing because it's not labeled the same as the before and after, even though it's staying the same. Yes, that's why I was. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is basically what we're, we're the proposal we're talking about here is this is Fifth Avenue south of uh, Madison Park. Take the bike lane here, parking lane there, painted pedestrian space there, and three travel lanes instead of four. So that's uh, yeah, providing space for turns, shortening crossing distances, and protecting bicycle space. Why, why only tainted pedestrian um, refuges? Mostly just because of uh, resources. I mean, we, we try to prioritize the concrete that we can put in. Uh, there are a lot of projects we're doing this year, and a lot of them involve concrete. And we have to prioritize There's a somewhere. shortage of concrete? Uh, it's, we have we're very busy. We're, <laughs> I mean, we, we've yeah. been doing a lot of community board, made a lot of presentations, and we're we're doing a lot of concrete work across. So, so you could potentially you yeah. come back. The, the idea so is to try to come back and try to install concrete. What we did yes. before that we would like to have the concrete because yeah. ideally. Right. Yeah, we, we have the room for it here. It's something we want to do, but it's just not something we. Something we definitely want to have like, all of these things. Yeah. Try to build them out as much as possible. Plus the circle as well in the future. That said, it, it's sometimes difficult given capital funding. Um, so yeah, the the turn treatments we're talking about. Uh, there are five left turns on the corridor. There's actually not very many left turns you can make on uh, <laughs> and Amsterdam in, in the corridor we're talking about. Uh, mostly because of the super blocks and because of um, some uh, like Lincoln Center and things like that. Uh, so, combination of uh, mixing zones, three locations, and then two locations, 57th and 66th, where we go with the uh, the split phase. Um, this mostly due to the crossing distance of the, the that street as well as the fact that it's two way traffic here. Um, so that would be our, our proposal for, for the turns that uh, we made on, left, the left turns that we made on this corridor. Uh, also, because of uh, these changes here, we'd be converting approximately 44 parking spaces into either pedestrian islands, so painted pedestrian islands, or uh, left turn treatments along that 20 block stretch. Uh, next slide. So, talking about at 70th up to 72nd, this is where. Familiar, familiar with this area. Uh, Amsterdam narrows a little bit. And also, this is the bow tie. This is where the uh, train is up here. 
So uh, for this proposal, I'm just going to sort of walk you through it. We'd be transitioning the curbside bike lane out with a curb extension here, which gets the so the, the parking here would end, cycles would come out. Uh, this puts them out in the in a in a lane here. And left turning vehicles would have to move into that lane. So right here it would be it will be shared kind of like an extended uh, mixing zone. Um, just the way the like with this all about here it's just the way it, this this design works most effectively is that to have cyclists be in the space and then vehicles that are making that left end turn have to move into it uh, we generally when there's a transition like that we want to have the cyclists already in the spot so that the vehicles have to move in um, then over here having curbside lane against the what is now painted but will but what will soon knock on something approximately wood uh, be constructed into a concrete concrete right here. Should be That's starting. That's being uh, worked on as we speak. Really? Okay. They what? they finished the water. Okay. Um, okay. Work. And, All right. And they are just um, starting to to build the island. Okay. All right. Last, last month they had there was no case. All right. Wonderful. Uh, so it'll be curved out here against that that new curve, and then coming back against the curve here. Uh, this left turn here is actually bus only, so um, typically very few vehicles are actually making that turn, so that's why it's curbside here, continuing on, on through. Uh, this maintains the existing traffic capacity through this bow tie area here, uh, creates, keeps the, the space dedicated as much as possible, and uh, it's compatible with all the future curb lines that are represented here in this beige uh, color, but that's what the future curb lines are going to be for the, the capital version of, of uh, this bus. Is, is there any kind of light treatment here? Because the buses sometimes get right. go ahead and mm -hmm. nothing else does. And how are the bikes going to know that the bus is going? Um, they, as far as I can, they don't get a separate signal. It's really just they're only the only ones who can make this this turn here. So um, with with that, I, there's a left turn arrow. For instance, the M5 would be there, uh, making its westbound turn on 72nd Street. Okay, I mean I'm, I can double check that, but that, I mean, last time I was there, you was wouldn't want the bike and the bus to go at the same time. So no, we would we we wouldn't want that. But yeah, if, yeah, if yeah, that, yeah, if that if that exists, we will. That exists. Yeah. Okay. You're going to be narrowing this to one lane because people make a lot of left-hand turns on the 71st Street. So the way you have it, that's what's really going to be in jeopardy. And secondly, you're going to have, you, you should be relieved so that when the first people die because the ambulance can't get through, they can come and call you. Let's keep it going. Thank you. Uh, uh, next slide. Yeah. Uh, so now talking about uh, changes to uh, commercial loading regulations on, on the corridor. Uh, would that include whenever we reduce capacity on a roadway, effective curb management is a key part of that uh, that, that proposal. Uh, next slide. So in this case, we're proposing we have the red areas here is we're proposing a 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday commercial loading regulation, so one on the east side between 53 and 54, and then another one from 54 to 55 on the west side, and then another one from 59 to 60, and then this area here we're actually proposing uh, what we call a spur on the on the side street for about, uh, I think it's 120 feet to have uh, a 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. loading regulation here on 70th, from 59 to 70, and then around the corner on 70th, and then a partial commercial loading zone 758 and then from 70 to 71 that would be a combination so it would be 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, commercial loading and then from 1 p.m. on it would be uh, meter parking. Yeah, that's a school street. 199 is a school street. And so yeah, that, that's, 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 that's the point of that is to reduce the amount of trucks that will be double parking. Which is good. Good. Okay. Uh, this is where uh, talk about traffic analysis. So we uh, we did thoroughly analyze this corridor, and uh, just to give uh, sort of the, the bird's eye view of what the changes would would entail in terms of traffic capacity, 
Um, right here we have the existing uh, at three locations, 57th, 66th, and 70th. Uh, delay is uh, something that basically is an average of all the delay any kind of vehicle would experience on uh, at that intersection. So some vehicles will just pass through and experience no delay. Some del uh, vehicles will arrive on the red and experience significant delay waiting for the signal. When you average that together over many, 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 many vehicles, uh, you end up with an average average delay. And so running that in an existing and a proposed model, <coughs> we came up with uh, these. This would be the approximate change in vehicle delay at these particular intersections uh, throughout the corridor. So going from about six seconds to about 11 seconds at 57th Street, so a change of five seconds uh, at 66th, going from about five and a half to close to 10, and then from 70th going from about 12 to about close to 15. Um, so basically we're talking about an increase in delay of about five seconds. Uh, this is for the PM peak hour, the busiest time on the roadway. Another way to look at this uh, is something called a volume to capacity ratio, where uh, we assign a maximum capacity to the roadway. And in the existing, because there are four lanes, it's at about three quarters, anywhere between a little bit over half to about three quarters full. And then in the proposed, because we are using three lanes with left turn treatments to allow for left turning vehicles to move. It goes a little bit higher, but it's still well below sort of the, the, the full uh, ratio, which would be one. Uh, here we have vehicle volumes, as I said, ranging between typically about 1,200 and 1,600 vehicles. So when you show this kind of delay, mm -hmm. is this stopped at a light or is this mid block? It's averaged. It's at the intersection. It's, average. it's, it's vehicles making it through the intersection. That's that's how this actually so, works. It's most so, of the, what it means is most of the people make it through the intersection, but some of them get caught. So it would be a five seconds. Let's say you get caught every five intersections. You get caught for 40 seconds. That uh, I can't do the average fast enough in my head. Because it's, it's a 40 like, second cycle. You would divide 40 by five. Eight. 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 eight, eight. eight. So are we saying this is a 20 block stretch we're looking mm -hmm. at, there's mm -hmm. an increase of less than five seconds per intersection. On average, so yeah. can you say that going from 50 seconds to 70 seconds will take on average an extra 100 seconds, so an extra minute and 40 seconds? Uh, not, I wouldn't say typically because this is only at the, at, at the peak two period. streets. So at the peak period it's adding um, less than an average of two minutes. I would I wouldn't say it's even adding that much. What? I wouldn't. No, I would. It's. I mean, this the roadway's going to function roughly like what it's functioning now. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, if you um, Ted want to just go to the last slide in the presentation, uh, we actually ran some taxi speeds for uh, Amsterdam from 72 up to 110. Uh, we ran this for an entire oh, month. Wow. Uh, our sample size down here was about 2,000 vehicles in the before. <clears throat> which was January 2016, and about 2,000 vehicles in the after Jan January 2017. And yeah, so the blue is the before, the red is the after, and it's pretty much the same. The reason why that is, is that you're actually getting at the turns, you're actually getting a turn lane out of this, that's where the parking removal comes, and that's really what holds up traffic anyway, are people queuing basically to make a turn around pedestrians and also feels dangerous. And plus your loading zones. So, yeah. right, so the yeah. loading yeah. zones also help a lot. So it's... <laughs> so, oh, oh, no, just, go, ahead. go ahead. No. What happened on Amsterdam north of 72nd is mm -hmm. that we lost an, an entire travel lane, which actually has affected the throughput of the M7 and the M11 buses. Um, you only have the M11 bus down in this stretch. Um, and as you pointed out, there's less traffic south of 72nd than there is north of 72nd. What is DOT doing to encourage truck travel if they're not making a delivery in the Upper West Side, Harlem, or Washington Heights to progress to New Jersey to make their northward trip, to use the Lincoln Tunnel, for instance? Is DOT doing anything to encourage not trucking through an area if you're not actually destined to make a delivery or pick up in that area? 
So, I mean, I can address that. We have our Office of Freight Mobility, and we're working very closely with all the trucking companies to, you know, direct them to the appropriate streets where they should be following truck routes. So, I mean, we we are working, you know, again, collaboratively, collaboratively with all the companies. If there is a particular sign that says, um, uh, you know, local deliveries, it, it should be enforced. Um, or if there's a if there's a truck that's traveling on the street that's not making a delivery and it's only for local deliveries that where a truck is permitted to be on, I mean that's an enforcement issue. So if you feel there's a particular street where we should look at, just email me the location. We'll be I mean I think it's it's pretty Friday. obvious that trucks are using Amsterdam <laughs> Avenue as their gateway to the GW Bridge and on to New Jersey and points west and north, and they could have done that. 39th Street instead of all the way to 179th Street, that would have been a good thing. Yeah. Maybe there's a toll incentive that can be worked out with New Jersey to mm -hmm. encourage such a thing. Interesting. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. Yeah. Just a thought. Later. That's a good thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look back a couple slides. Sorry, I skipped all the way at the end. Uh, yeah. So yeah, pretty much that's this is our proposal: uh, shortening crossing distances for pedestrians, common traffic. Cyclists providing protected cycling space and creating a uh, protected connection uh, from from the west part of Midtown, and then uh, for vehicles is maintaining adequate vehicle capacity and organizing electrics. Those special turn places where you're putting in the split phase, mm -hmm. uh, 66, 66 and 57th, yeah. I guess. There is a phase where turns are allowed and bikes and pedestrians have a, a, a red at that point, correct? Now, yeah, they would be as similar to the uh, split phase we're proposing on 8th Avenue. It would be a protected time for bicycles and pedestrians to cross and then time for the left to go. Ken? Um, like Mr. Zellman, I, I'm very concerned about the um, uh, intersection that's 72nd um, mm -hmm. where cyclists are going to be mixing with turning drivers. A good thing. Um, is there? Did you look at any other? Did you look at any other possible treatments where cyclists could be better protected? I mean, we looked at a number of possible treatments, and uh, th this was. I mean, I'm not going to say the best. I'm more more like the least worst. Uh, it, it's. It, I mean, we. You need to have cyclists come out twice in order to get out out here because you have a left turn. Uh, so you, you have to get them out this way, and then you have to get them out again. So two lanes out uh, to, to get to this point here because this extends so far out, which is why we have them coming out at this uh, at this curve. We, instead, instead of doing an island here, we did a curve extension and then having them be in line here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but we have a quick curve right here to make sure the vehicles don't like cheat into this space before they're uh, for the yeah, far south intersection. So there is a vertical element right here to to uh, sort of claim the space for, for cyclists but this is uh in terms of in terms of th this block what you need is you need visibility you need to have cyclists already in the space where vehicles are moving into it yeah, this is yeah. out of, sorry out of all the stuff that you guys saw as far as traffic analysis on this 10th avenue pretty much functions pretty well as all of us know with the wing neighborhood information but this is the choke oh, yeah. this is the point where everybody gets caught up and the more people get caught up, the more they get angry at that turn, well, we walk to Trader Joe's, or we leave Trader Joe's, or McDonald's. Um, and that's one of those things that, like, it's tough. I wish there was a, all the signal phasing in the world there, but we really, what Patrick's saying is there's points where you have to make the conflict noticeable. You have to let the, the uh, cyclist and the vehicle know that there's a potential <laughs> there's a conflict, and we've done that by slowly merging them out and showing them where the conflict is. Do you think it's going to be obvious to drivers? Well, it, I mean, it's been a nightmare for pedestrians until recently. Um, and the changes, just you know, painting this area, you know, which will, which will now is to get actual uh, concrete. And then adding some of these cross because pedestrians were just crossing whichever way they wanted to, so it's it's really improved yeah. pedestrian safety. Um, I, 
And mm -hmm. it's just a hard one for the bikes. I don't know. I mean, I know that area. I've the only way, the, the only reason why I bring up the congestion aspect in this part is the only way you could do it is if you created a left turn lane that would just muck up traffic further back right. and create more issues at the next intersection. You know. So, well, let me. I mean, it, it seems that what you're saying is so we don't possibly muck up traffic. We're gonna. It's okay to endanger. Cyclist lives. What I'm, that's it's, not what I'm saying. What I'm saying that the mucking up of traffic endangers everybody's life. And we have to make sure that we appropriate deal with every time there's a conflict on the roadway, that we appropriate. It, 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 just to continue for a second, it does seem like there's a lot of space um, at that corner. Um, and I can imagine in some the other corner you're referring to? The, um, the uh, southwest uh, corner. Of 71. Of 71, right. Why why that couldn't be it's a really good point. given over to I mean in, in some other European it's cities I can think of that's what they would automatically if do. We have a huge capital budget <laughs> and a city that would like to close that McDonald's for three years while we do it. I you think know. of it that's what it would necessitate. So just, I have a quick question because I'm not a biker. So, what do bikers currently do? Like, is this an improvement over what bikers Right now, there's no experience? bike. There's, there's no, no bike lanes. No I know bike there's, there's no bike lanes, but, but people bike, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they yeah. Bike, they're all over the street. Well, yeah. They so, they're liable to be on the east right? side of the northbound right. street because right. that's where you'd expect them to be. Yeah. Right. I usually come through about this, oh, sorry. about here when I'm passing through this, inter this intersection. I'm, I'm out in this lane generally uh, right. because I'm, I'm setting myself up to be here. Mark, did you have your hand? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, so, you're talking about a lot of changes here, both from a bike perspective as well as a car perspective. How does that get rolled out in terms of education? Especially when this is first on by when it's most dangerous. In terms of what do you mean by education? How do people know what to do? Uh, like well, how, do you know how do they learn that it's yeah, coming and then driver that you're going into a bike lane and to look for bikes? You know, I know you said that people are supposed to be queuing there, but let's say. You know. I mean, you mean specifically right at, uh, right here? Uh, yeah, because I do agree with him that the most dangerous part of this plan. Okay. Um, well, I mean, the the markings that are here are very very typical. They're very standard. You find them in a lot of like left turning treatments. Uh, we have. Green paint here and uh, buffered markings so that vehicles like the motorists understand that this is a space that bikes are supposed to be in. At this point here, uh, shared lane markings through that turn lane. So I mean, we, we have this uh, condition in, in a lot of uh, in a lot of left turn lanes or a lot of lot of a lot of roadways. Any bollards in there? Uh, nothing vertical through this particular block, just because we. There's also parking along the curb, which we looked at moving out here, but then it would it would basically cause a visibility problem as cyclists come around this little curb right there. So I mean, it's we looked at a lot of different ways to get cyclists through this intersection, and and it, this is the one that that works the most. Rich, um, so looking at the data um, on an earlier slide. This intersection, apart from 57th in Amsterdam, is the worst. There were 27 injuries from 2012 to 2016. Rich, what did you just say? There were 27 injuries from 2012 to 2016 on this intersection. It's the second worst in this 20 block stretch yeah. behind only 57th and Amsterdam, which is a major intersection. 57th and 10th, there was nothing. Yeah, 57th and 10th. Um, I know it would cause more travel for our vehicles, but should we consider getting rid of the left turn? And forcing vehicles to go up to 73rd Street if they want to go west, because right now what? Yeah, I, I imagine that most of these vehicles are going to the highway. Mm -hmm. They're going left on 71st Street, right on Central Park West, on West End Avenue, and then left again on 72nd Street. And 73rd is also a place where a lot of vehicles cut over to get back, back to, to Broadway. Broadway if they were traveling on Broadway originally. 73rd is actually a rather busy and bus place where it turns happen. Right, buses yeah, bus is queue there and then, then, then turn there. Subway. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, a lot of subway. It, it, is it a good idea that we're steering vehicles that want to get onto the highway or that want to uh, go west on 71st Street? We're creating this conflict in a very dangerous intersection 
at 71st in Amsterdam, we're probably creating more issues at 72nd and uh, West End or at 72nd and Riverside because we've got, we're forcing more left turns, which are more problematic. Should we rethink this whole area and ban left turns from this intersection? Well, there aren't a lot of places for, for motors to make lefts, um, like in the, the corridor we're talking about, from 52 up to, to 72. Mm -hmm. uh, so remove, like there's, I think, only five left turns you can actually make well, in those 20 blocks. Is, 66 is the last. Yeah, yeah. So between so, 66 and 71st, there's no way to, to go west. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's less of people that's trying to that's cut that's off. That's a, that's a two line. Yeah. At this point, from according to our numbers and what we've analyzed, it's less people trying to cut around and go north there. It's actually local access to the fact that, and some of us, like, yeah, I live in the area. I actually use this a lot because it's the only way to get over there to my mother-in-law's house, you know, because it, it, it's easy. Like, it, there's no other left turn that you can take anywhere around. And I think that that... As far as like my biggest concern with what you said, I, I yeah. agree with you, I would love to be in it, but I think we would have outrage from the people on 71st. There aren't that many on 71st. 71st yeah. dead ends. Yeah. Um, it it's the access to Lincoln Tower. 71st doesn't dead end until the other because, side of Pub. West yeah, Avenue. but it goes to Riverside and then you can go around. It would be yeah. very, you would have I mean, to probably the direction of that street. What, what I would say would be an even worse idea would be to make 70th two way. Oh, and it's right. wide yeah. enough, yeah. but there's a school. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mike? Yeah, thanks. Thank I, I, a couple of points, one of which is just a quick response to Rich. One of the most dangerous parts of this is that crossing the Great Divide of 72nd Street. And your diagram doesn't show us how to pick up on the other side. And that's kind of a funky area, too. So I'm hoping. Uh, one of the things that's <laughs> yummy. Um, but if you were to ban the turn at 71st Street, you would be putting the, the, the natural turn would be at 72nd, not at 73rd, because that's where the pedestrians come out of the subway. And I wouldn't want to put any more pressure on 72nd Street where the bicycle is trying to make that cross. But my, the main point I want to, want to talk about is loading zones for commercial businesses along the stretch that you talked about. Because I think I only saw two full loading zones and, and two partials, and that includes parts that are not in our district. Um, so the full loading zone is right by the liquor store, and it's exactly where you're going to be bumping out cyclists to get into the queue in that quasi or leading into the shared lane. Mm -hmm. And our experience is uh, on Amsterdam Avenue with uh, north of 72nd Street is that um, is that delivery trucks tend not to use the loading zones that are there and don't have enough of them anyway. So you end up with loading on both sides and really only one throughput traveling. So my suggestion to you, especially when open in the stretch from 66th to 70th Street, um, there's a couple of synagogues, but then there's, there are commercial enterprises on both sides of the street. But they're small. They are, but they need deliveries. Um, so yeah, if you move it further down, it what, what, what Mark is saying, and which is absolutely true, and mm -hmm. which we've seen right. on Upper Amsterdam, mm -hmm. is that DOT installed loading zones. And for whatever reason, people making a delivery to the other side of the street don't use the loading. <laughs> they double park on the on the side that they're delivering. Sure. Okay. That's okay. just okay. human nature. Okay. And they also no, double park, and, and, and the other thing that they do is that they double park outside the loading zone and then use the loading zone as a staging area, yeah, right. especially exactly. for bigger deliveries. And the net, and I think the reason is there aren't enough of them, and so they're afraid they're going to get boxed in. We, okay. That was the same problem we had on West End Avenue in that pilot several years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think the answer there and the answer here is that we don't have enough of them. And that that in turn creates back pressure that will defeat the utility of your entire plan, which I am inclined to support, but I want to see more blue and red in there um, in order to make the impingement on the bikes and on the throughput of uh, vehicles well, the less less acute. We're going to add that to the suggestion list. That's clearly, we and those are easily added. The problem, Where are you guys talking about? Can we just talk specifics for a second? Where sure. would be the so places this, that you guys would be interested in? So this is the school between 65th and 66th, so you can't do a loading zone there. But you could do it somewhere in there. And then this is Amsterdam, 
them uh, this is just Lincoln Center. So, you know. You have one on the other side of the street. So you could yeah. have one on the other side. I, I was excited know. about when you said across the street. Is that what you were? I think you need them on both sides of the street. Yeah, I agree. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You certainly want one between 56 and 57, even though right. it's not my district. Between 56 and 57, there is a CVS and a, uh, and a supermarket there. Mm -hmm. is that, that, that's not a CVS. Is that the corner? Yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, sorry. It, it's, no, I'm sorry. sorry. Walgreens? Well, yep. Whatever. Okay. Yep. Let's this Those big drug chains. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and then behind Lincoln Center, mm -hmm. you should have at least one. People deliver to Amsterdam houses. Yeah, so hi. Yeah, so the Center. So yep. Lincoln Center in general is, again, like plan break in support of the plan mm -hmm. in general. We're working with DOT directly with Colleen and Ed in our office to talk about the area behind the Metropolitan Office loading dock yep. precisely. Yep. To not have it be loading, have it be fully striped so it's not loading or okay. unloading. Uh, we have to be able to turn trucks into the back of that loading dock. So, this right plan, trucks. we believe we come up with a complete compromise to Perfect. take out four or five parking spots Perfect. to actually have it be striped so it can turn the trucks in and out. So, yes, Lincoln Center is in support of it, um, but adding more loading on either side, I don't yeah, see no. how we can I mean, you have that to really consider the institution. What is your name? Amanda. Thanks. Any other comments? Um, Richard. When the discussions took place about putting in protected bike lanes first on Columbus and then on Amsterdam, there were a lot of comments about repercussions if you if you put protected bike lanes on an avenue that's so thoroughly commercial that has many storefronts on practically every street and on both sides of the avenue in terms of all of these delivery trucks and pickup trucks. They have to get access to the curb to pick up or deliver. And so it's happened and predictably, you know, you go up Amsterdam uh, 72nd, 79, 79 to 86, and if a truck refusing to be able to park at the curb now has to park outside the protected bike lane, so they're already fairly far out into the street. If, if the parking area is taken, and this big truck double parks outside this now extended parking lot, uh, parking spot. They're 45 percent of the way across the road, practically to the center line. And traffic, you, you're saying that it's only slightly slower. I've seen time after time traffic literally at a standstill for blocks on end for several minutes while all the time uh, the idling <laughs> engines are, are you know and, and that's why we're talking about the air. Air. That's, that's that's exactly what we're trying to avoid and so <coughs> you know but he's talking about right. north of 70 yeah, he's yeah, talking about and, and so what i'm yeah. saying is yeah. when you when you put protected bike lanes onto such heavily commercial and, and then you've got the long distance buses that are, are now slowed up as well right. that have yeah, that's why we're talking about it. yeah so the, the the fact is the, the number of people who are convenienced by having a protected bike lane on commercial avenues like this, I think, are far outnumbered by those who are in Again, that's why we're talking about the loading zones. Yes. Yeah, well, why have protected yes. bike lanes on Amsterdam? Okay. So you got, got your name. James. James. Yeah, hi. Oh, come up again. Sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. I find that uh, uh, going up Amsterdam Avenue uh, from 72nd on up has been very good. I think. The the blending they they have a blending in the on Columbus Avenue in uh, sixty uh, sixty six. Right. And it, it, it to me it doesn't work. I mean I'm I can be an aggressive bicyclist, but it's for the passive bicyclist. It's it's hair raising. It's got to be, you know. And you can't you can't uh, you can't blend with a uh, you know a four thousand pound car, and you got a bicycle where all you have around you is your skin and you don't have airbags. Um, I I don't know. It's got to be a better way to you know where the bicyclists have more of a right of way, you know. And I think it. Um, where am I here? Here, here, right here. Yeah, I, I think it should just continue on straight, you know, right up. But I, 
don't know. You can't because the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, we got this. So we got that. The bow tie is a unique. That's in there now. It's in there now. Right. That base is going to be concrete. That base is going to be concrete. That base is there. Is this proposed? No, that's there. That's there. The base is consistent. Well, this is the question. It's like 66. I know, but very dangerous area. They had to put the orange bump outs in because. We had several pedestrians that were killed. There. Right, that's very important. So you know, it, it it's a really difficult intersection. It is, yeah. For for for, for pedestrians and and it's cyclists. a compromise for everybody. I uh, you know, it's, if I were riding my bike and yeah. at this point in my life, I would probably walk it. Um, but yes, while, while you're while you're here and you're I'm talking about this, is there going to be a signal here for bicyclists? Uh, it, it's a signal for prevalence. It's the standard signal that's there. So who knows? How do they know who goes first? How do they, how know, do they know if the bus is going to make that turn? Yeah. Yeah. The bus is in the turning lane. It's going to turn. That's going to be hairy right oh. there. There has to be a. I assume there would be a green bike signal here because if you give a green light to both, they go forward and they go into them. Exactly. So there is encouraging a, a crash. Place, right? I wait. I don't believe there is a split phase at this location, unless, no. I'm, unless I'm incorrect. You're but I, I mean, the 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 there the is an advanced left turn arrow, and then there is a continue and do whatever you want arrow. Okay. So do the, bus, do the buses have to stop at the light? Yeah. yeah. They don't have a left turn so that they can make it. Only the M5 makes the left turn. Right. So when the M5 is going turning left from Broadway onto 72nd Street, it, does it, it has to arrow. stop at the red light it does. before it crosses it Broadway. Does. It doesn't have the light all the way. So when the it's a really good point, but the thought is there with the design is that we're going to make the bikes cross with the pedestrians, right? Because the buses are actually very cognizant of the pedestrians there, and it's not a treatment that you would see in many other places. You're right to pick up pick up on it, but that's a place where we feel just because it's not a super high volume right. of left turning buses. It's a place where definitely buses are keyed in to that left. Yeah, it's a place where we would right. feel it's comfortable with letting the bikes go. As a pedestrian, as a pedestrian there, there, when I so, cross, I feel very safe because the buses are smooth. Yeah. Are yeah. Not, the M5 yeah. 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 I mean, if it's a barn stand, the bike would be able to cross. But anyone that's turning is not turning. The buses go with the pedestrian. I'm pretty sure the buses do go with the pedestrian. It's only the five that makes the turn. It's bus only. And I think that they're probably very cognizant of it. Of yeah. It's also a direct route for vehicles to turn to get to the Henry Hudson Parkway. Well, they're not allowed to turn. Is there, they're not allowed to turn. It's an illegal way. It's another reason why we felt it's not going to happen. Another reason why we felt Generally speaking, we would do, we would either put the bikes outside of the bus lane or we would do shared treatment there. But here is one of the places where we talked to MTA and they were coming. This is one of the advantages of infrequent bus service. <laughs> I don't think bus uh, runners would agree with that. <laughs> the only advantage of it. That's right. That bus, bus only comes once every three hours, and then there are so, eight yeah. of them at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, another question? Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. You can go ahead. You can go ahead. Could you go back to the slide where you have mixing zones on the left and split phase on the right? Okay. 15 zones on the left, in my opinion, are bad. Split phase on the right, in my opinion, is good. You're showing these two different slides, and my understanding is that you have these and other uh, methods of dealing with the left hand turn in your, in your kit of parts. And split phase, as is discussed at Community Board 4, is certainly preferable by that board. And in my opinion, it's certainly safer because the cyclist is separated, the car is separated, you don't mix. And so my, my, my concern is that that's a, that's a safer way to handle the left-hand turn. And Rich has pointed out that this is the second most dangerous intersection in this whole thing. How many people were injured? 27. 27. Huh? 27. 27. 27. Okay. So... My question is, why wouldn't you increase the safety of the plan in the most dangerous part of the plan? I'm concerned that when I look at your plan, I see no protection 
for the cyclist, and yet you know that it's the most, second most dangerous intersection. So there's a disconnect there that, 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 that troubles me greatly. Are you talking 71st, please? Yeah. 71st. Can we go back to the 71st slide? So, so the, the only option here, because we basically used all of the available signal timing to make all these other pedestrian improvements here, the only option we have for this intersection is geometric. That is, like, is what? Geometric, geometric meaning <laughs> changing positions, putting paint on the street. Uh, make, make, making shift the positions of, of things. We can't make any kind of timing changes here because we have all of these other uh, uh, okay. to So I would suggest that you haven't solved the problem. You come up a, you've come to a, a, you've taken it to a level where you haven't achieved a safe solution. So you haven't, you haven't completed your design front. You haven't solved the problem. What um, signage? According to Reed, about what kind of signage would you have at 70th Street to alert motorists, for instance, that this was coming? Me meaning, is it just paint here? I mean, that, I mean, that you're going to be in a shared it's, it's situation. Be a it's, sign above? it's really, it's really more having a vertical element here, so that the cars are here and have to move into it. We generally don't. You don't put signage. I mean, we, we put signage in in, uh, in in some locations, but we really prefer that motorists are watching the road and watching what's going on rather than. Looking at we don't want to rely on signage, but there would likely by what we do in other places, there would be a sign there that says bikes yield. Bike street. Sorry, Cars. vehicles yield bikes, bikes and pedestrians. You know, I, I'd like to go back to to eliminating the turn on the the left turn on the street. And, and I know we can't look at that now, but you know, could we, in our resolution, as we did with the first one, have a decision to have to do a real study? Roberta, I don't know how you could eliminate that and not allow left turns on Seventy Second Street. You'd be looking at such a bottleneck at Seventy Third, you wouldn't believe it. But I, I, they could why still. Would, why would you? I, I, think I, could at, I, I think they could look at. I think. He's already said it's low volume. It's low volume. I don't know why we don't. I think, I think it could be addressed. It was because of all the people exiting the subway. I, I think we can have them delay it. Yeah. It was for pedestrian safety. I mean, it can't hurt. There's no them. harm in looking. It can't hurt to ask them to do a study of turning, you know, where to, where the best turn to the left is. Because what happens, what, what happens here is that you have, oh yeah. Oh, that's a quiet You have three phases. So Amsterdam can go this way, continuing. Yeah. And, and then they can turn. Meantime, they're still turning. Broadway is coming this way. There are a lot of pedestrians all over the and place. So you have pedestrians, you have pedestrians that, that do not believe that they should follow lights, <laughs> that they should cross when and how they want. And so you have, I mean, this section is just like, it, it's sad. Can um, I'm, I'm wondering if you've, you, you know the mixing zone, I don't know what it's called, but at 85th and, and Amsterdam and 70th and, 70th and Columbus, and Columbus mm -hmm. which is, I think, a much safer much design, and it forces cars to make almost a uh, right angle left turn, which slows them down. Um, you, I guess you don't want to, I mean, you could have a, de a, a dedicated bike lane against the curb and force drivers out further into that intersection and make a real left hand right angle turn. And I guess the only reason you don't want to do that is that it would possibly muck up traffic. I don't know the issue is actually that they would be asking turning vehicles and cyclists to cross right around here in the intersection. That's, that's actually well, that's an know. issue. I'm not saying that's the only issue and like don't get me wrong, I work on these things all throughout the city. Yeah. And I'm not trying to say that that's our primary concern yeah. at all. Primary yeah. concern here is safety. This would That would be an inappropriate place because you could never get the bikes right. to go here. You would have to then get the bikes to go around this corner, close to pedestrians, and up around like this no, and like no, that. No, they would yes, you basically would. follow because the same. To follow the, to follow the offset crossing that what we've done on Columbus, you need to have the area where this vehicle turns and is perpendicular to the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. So either you pull that vehicle turning mm -hmm. out to this side of the roadway, 
That's or what I'm suggesting. Then I'm not you, suggesting well, that's you can't pull it out either. You, you can't pull it out because you have the Broadway traffic. That's where that's you have Southtown Broadway, too. Well, you would you say there's very few cars making that Well, I'm saying the through vehicles are what suffer. I'm not talking about the left. I'm talking about if you this turn the repercussions aren't this aren't these people here it's if you turn this out all these people the one pinch point that we talked about as far as traffic flowing up here is this point all of those people will then get pushed back and they will do strange things at this intersection it will be hard to get through this intersection now because everybody will be clustered up here It'll be a nightmare. But frustration, they might do some unsafe. But you've already said that very few people are making the left. It's but like, it's not the left per se. It's the left. It's the blues, and you have to right. push the left. So, but the fact that very few people are making the left also is why you. Would Did you say that very few people are making yeah. the left? I don't think that's true. At least certain times of the day, people are making the left. Yeah. So the volumes are indicative of more local So what they have in the minutes is that we approve the plans as presented. We also suggest, number one, that DOT check on the light patterns for buses turning left from northbound Broadway to westbound 72nd to ensure that there aren't conflicts with bikes. And Ted said that um, he believes that bikes will cross with the pedestrians, but you guys will check on that. Number two, we're asking DOT to look at eliminating the left turn on 71st Street. We know that there are complications. We don't think that 72nd Street would be any better. We know there are issues with 73rd Street, but it can't hurt to look and see if there might be a possibility. We know it's the most dangerous intersection in this stretch in our district, so let's at least explore it. Number three, um, look at adding more loading zones on both sides of 10th Avenue in Amsterdam through this entire stretch. Does that sum everything up? Are we ready? I don't know if we should be recommending loading zones for community board four, I think we can say no. for our district. Can, from 59. From 50, you know, Amsterdam Avenue. Right. But I also think you should include what Andrew said. I think that that was such a good idea of in some way getting those trucks to turn and go to the weekend time as opposed yeah. to having that. Yeah. And I think that's because that's, 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 that's what goes on up ahead. All right. So we all are in favor of that. I didn't yeah. get a chance. So why don't you, why don't you put it in? I'm Colleen, it's this, you know. Is, is that your question? They are. Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Is there a second for the resolution? Though? Are we adding that fourth point? Um, I, I think that's beyond the yes. scope of this. I I think think did we talk about a split phase at 70 seconds? At 72? at 72, there's no left turn, so there's no need for the left turn. So right. Yeah, the first thing was that they're going to check yeah. to make sure that's not a so conflict. Okay. Yeah. I call the question. Um, quick question. Yeah. Two questions. One, I think someone already kind of made the main points. But as long as people are doing it, someone mentioned like. Like standstill traffic in the hot seventies, which has the bike lane. And as, as, as someone who walks and bikes along that, along those two blocks, like multiple times a day, um, it disappears. That is a distortion. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to ask you is just um, I'm wondering because I saw the like I heard the presentation from Community Board Four. I was wondering why why is this stopping at Fifty Second and not getting further down? Is it because of the tunnel or some other? We're proposing cross town bike lanes on Fifty Second, Fifty Fifth. Right now, we're, we're just discussing from 50. Community board said our, our district ends at 59. Right. You called the question. Uh, I called the question. All those second. in favor? Oh, second. All those in favor? Uh, six okay. opposed, abstaining. Great. Um, non committee members, all those in favor? Uh, three, four, five, six, seven. All those opposed? All those abstaining? The resolution passes. And was the previous vote uh, 6070 zero, zero as well? Yes. Yes. There was eight. There was eight. Not two. Somebody left. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Only when you have a good presentation. Um, no, I don't even know. Oh, okay.
Thank you so much. So, uh, you try people not here. This is a very large turn off right now. It's July. Yeah. And it's, I guess it is our normal week. Let's just say it's not our normal week. Yeah, it's great. Right. It's not perfect. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Okay. Did you bike that moving. section of 10,000? Is there someone here? Right. I want you to look at the Yes. I've seen you before. Yes. How are you? Thank you so much. I sent you because I know Andrew from um, FCS4. I'm going to try to push with people who want SBS. Okay. So are other people. How you uh -huh. um, okay, let's keep it moving. Yeah. Um, are you, uh, you going to give us an update on the uh, mid block crossing of 106? Yeah, you're not going to like it. I'm not going to like it. Yeah, and it's, you know, an inch and a half deep. Okay. Uh, folks, please, can we uh, listen to uh, Colleen, our representative from DOT? You may recall we all Thank you for virtually oh. read. Okay, one conversation. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Colleen Cattigan from City DOT. So as you know, the board had sent us a resolution to look at the, or to do a feasibility study of a mid-block crossing on uh, West 106th Street between Amsterdam and Columbus Avenue. We did conduct a study and it was wow. determined that the mid-block crossing um, is not feasible. And the reason why is because we had low volumes of pedestrians crossing. We did counts. Um, low pedestrians, of, uh, low yeah. volume of pedestrians crossing mid-block or at the corners? At the corners, oh. at the corners. Because there's so many are crossing mid-block, maybe. Well, they shouldn't. They really shouldn't because we want them to cross at the corners where it's designated. It's, there's a couple of senior facilities, which is why we asked for this, because it, we didn't want them to have to walk all the way to the corner and all the way, you know. I yeah. know. It's not just low volume, it's low volume. And, yeah. and, you know, um, unfortunately, we're not going to approve it um, because the volumes, again, were very low at the times that we look at the crossing. We looked at the crossing between 7.30 and 8.30 a.m. There were 22 pedestrians crossing in, in yeah, an hour. I don't think that's the, the top okay. hour for crossing. Well, we yeah. also looked at one between 1 and 2 p.m. There were 18 pedestrians crossing in an hour. We looked at 5 to 6 p.m. There were 44 pedestrians crossing in an hour. And in order to qualify um, for a signal for mid-block crossing, you need a minimum of um, 107 pedestrian crossing. A major Did you look when there's a community board meeting at Red Oak? Did you take a measurement then? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. But listen, the good news is that, not to say traffic, I mean, traffic problems change, we will be more than happy to revisit this again. All right. Well, um, we, we won't. Our, yeah. But wait a second. You, you, there, you, you, never at, at, you never counted people crossing illegally. Uh, in the middle of the well, to be honest with you, when we were out there, we did not see that happening. You know, we didn't see that. We we focused on we a lot of requests for this, believe it or not. I would imagine, but you know what? Um, people crossing illegally. We encourage, you know, pedestrians to cross at the crosswalk, not the mid block. Sure. Is there it's something? The elderly, so thing. what what happens is you have the Jewish, um, the red apple. Well, not red apple. Red oak. Red oak. You get red oak on one corner, right across the street from Jewish home. Jewish home. home. Mm -hmm. And they have programs there that people at red oak use. And so they're at red oak and they don't, and they're older. So, so and, you have to go to the facilities and say, when is the high traffic? And you know, Columbus Amsterdam is a long block. So we're actually asking some of the elderly folks to walk hundreds of feet out of their ways. So they don't do it. And there's an older man who sometimes sits outside and sits across the street. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are crossing illegally. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are crossing illegally. Is there, is there some, do you have anything in your toolbox that could help slow traffic? Because what happens is it, it, it's a hill, mm -hmm. and so I think part of the problem, as I recall, is that cars going in one direction don't see that people are crossing. You know what? I wonder if we can explore an, an enhanced crosswalk marking. Maybe that's something that from our great. toolkit that we can do. I don't think we mean? want to create a crossing without a light so that older yeah, people can cross mid-block. Yeah. 
either we have a light and do it safely or we don't but we don't want to encourage an unsafe movement if we haven't allocated well right now it's an unsafe movement it really is if you're crossing mid block is there a watch for pedestrian sign mid block there if you recall um no i don't think there is no. I don't, but you know what? I don't want to. I don't want you to feel discouraged because I'll take this back, and I'll see what else we can do. Okay. Um, again, I'll stress the two institutions that are there and the fact that there are a lot of seniors that are crossing that area. So let it's me discuss it. Yeah, it's it is. There's two senior facilities on either side of 160. Right. It, it seems like the measure that's been used isn't the right measure because right. it's not a matter of so much volume <laughs> that we need to create a new crosswalk. It's a very unique situation where kind of senior it's kind people, people mid block on both sides that need to get to each other. Okay. And so it's not a huge volume, but for them, it's a real hardship to have to go all the way to one to avenue one or to the to other, cross, yeah. uh, up and down a hill, and do a really long walk yeah. just to get across the street. Yeah. Again, let me take it back to our signals division, and I'll Please. see what what they say, right. and we can look at it again. Thanks. Okay. Sure. Sure. Just, no, just, no, just no. keep in mind that some of the people that have mobility. Yeah. Yes. So, so it really is a hardship to go to the corner and then come back. Come back. And, and, then then go back and, walk and walk through the canes. Yeah. Right. Wheelchairs. Uh, wheelchairs. Walk. And, and maybe it's possible to have it only, you know, only certain right. hours. Well, it, can be, it can be on demand. Like. All, you know, all night. Yeah, make it on demand. Could be on demand. Yeah. Okay. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. It could be on demand. We'll take a look at it. I'll let them know. have that in Central Park. Update on the um, district needs statement. Yeah. Elizabeth uh, who was going to be here, but who has an event related to her work, yes. uh, couldn't be here tonight, but she is continuing to work on this and tells us she should have us something by the end of July, early August, which I think is still fine for our time uh, frame. Yeah, she reached out to me and, and she told me to work with her that way. That's right. And if I could just prove what she says offline, I think this year that'll be good. So she'll circulate it. No, we'll make sure everybody gets it. Did you want to say something? I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Yeah. Nick. Nick. Yeah, um, I'll have, uh, I'll keep it brief because we're here long. Okay. Um, but uh, can I use either that computer or connect to my computer? Hey, there yeah, sure. Do you need the screen again? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so while we're getting set up, I can talk about what's going on here. Uh, we actually, um, I wish the transportation guys were still here because uh, this is actually all about bike lanes in the Upper West Side. Uh, so the gist of it is essentially that I took all of the data for. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm new. So I, oh, I have hi. No sorry, no, no, I'm new. <laughs> okay. I'm not doing the proper introduction. Okay. My name's Nick uh, Hara. I live up here in the Upper West Side. I work for a company called Tableau Software. We're all about data, data visualization, um, and I just have been trying to get more involved in my local community. Um, We're so happy to have just, you. Huh? We're happy to have you. Uh, you don't know what you're stepping into. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm enthusiastic and naive. How do you so, spell her? H A R A. Those two usually go together. Right. So let's see here. Uh, oh, we, we get this presentation. Uh, and I've actually posted this up online so you guys can all have access to it. I can send you the link afterward. Um, but like I said, excuse me, it's going to reload here for a second. Uh, <laughs> this is data related to uh, traffic incidents and injuries. This one specifically uh, uh, related to cyclist related injuries or, or accidents. So often there will be a collision, but there is no reported injury. Right, right. Um, but here you can see it's, it's specifically just for CB7. I went a little low, went a little high just to make sure that we captured it all. Uh, and you can see the bike lanes are marked. Um, it's not marking their direction. Uh, that's an improvement I, I plan on doing a little bit later. Uh, but I wanted to draw your attention to just a couple of areas which I'm sure you're already aware of. I'm sure the transportation guys are already aware of as well. The first one being the 72nd Street Corridor, uh, which we didn't talk about today at all. But you can see that uh, for every intersection in this area on 72nd, we're starting to get um, bumps of injuries. Uh, and this is data from 20, 
sometime late in 2012 to early 2017. I'm hoping to get an updated data set. Where did um, you get the data? Uh, just on New York City's open From the government. NYPD yeah. crash? Uh, yes, I believe so. Uh, or it might be from their vision zero. I mean, it's, yeah. yeah. Um, the other area, so we can actually zoom in, we can take a look at it. Uh, and, and obviously there's a lot to discover here. Uh, one of those areas being uh, the Columbus Circle uh, area, which has a lot of incidents. Um, but specifically, I'd like to draw your attention to this one. Uh, so this is uh, 72nd and Broadway. So if I select it, it actually gives us the street view over here. And you can actually see how many cyclists there are in this area. Uh, just if I zoom in here. So uh, one, that's a cyclist. It's a little hard to see. It's easier to see on a, a better screen. Uh, then if I just turn, looking up Broadway here, there's cyclist uh, parked <laughs> here, and there's a cyclist on the road. And this is just one shot as a car is going through. Uh, and we can actually see that this trend really holds steady on especially Broadway and 72nd. So if I were to actually just filter to let's say just Broadway, and I'll, I'll try to wrap it up here real quick, uh, is we can see all of the accidents start to show uh, a pattern on Broadway. And I know that uh, actually transportation, when they were here briefly mentioned that Broadway is an area of concern. So the things that we notice as a pattern are uh, incongruous uh, bike lanes, uh, areas where people are going to bike whether we have a lane there or not, uh, and finally, uh, where lanes end uh, suddenly, and that would be where Central Park is. So there's no cross through there. Uh, so that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. Uh, just give you guys a future thought, let you know that this kind of data is available. And uh, if you have other questions related to it, as long as it's there, happy to the talk thing, about The that. thing that we have asked for from DOT, and which would be so, and we've asked NYPD when we have them periodically here is if they have a listing or, or a, of how the accident, yeah, what the kind of accident, <coughs> what, what yeah, direction yeah. was occurring, where the vehicle was, where the bicycle or pedestrian was, yeah. what direction. We, those sort of things would be helpful to us. We never can get that information. Right, and there's some directional information available, but there's not a lot in terms of, at least from what I can tell, what uh, uh, NYC's data site is providing us. It's not telling us what direction they're heading. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I think part of that would probably, to some degree, probably run into like privacy issues. Um, we, we don't want to know what happened. Yeah. We just want to know what we did, we're not asking for identities. Yeah. We we're don't just want asking to know for who direction. Right, right. We don't want to know what their injury was. We Which direction the car was going, yeah. where the bike or pedestrian was. Yeah, and I can't I can't answer to that. I can tell you that what's in the data is mostly unspecified injuries. Right. There's so almost no information yeah. about the majority of accidents that happened. Happen. Yeah. When, when you when it I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. When it when it has an unspecified injury or any injury or or sorry, cost, sorry, is what I meant. Uh, yes. Does that mean it was reported by by the police? I does this couldn't have tell to be you. A police I don't know. Yes, to, to make this, this it data, does, right? it, this is all police data. This is the uh, the data that the police are releasing. So it's every this comes from every report of a crash anywhere in the city. So it has to have a police report. Now we're down to, to our district, list. but yeah. it is a police report. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But about half of the police reports, as this shows, yeah, or an unspecified cause of. Frankly, it's it's, right. a, it's so if we know that there have been five year misses at, at a corner, that's incidental information. It's yeah. not actually right. What what would really be helpful, and especially looking at this with with bike injuries, if you look at this, very often there's a lot of missing information, right. um, and and the things that do stand out are sort of the the things that we wouldn't expect. Right? right. So there's a few incidents where people lose consciousness, and that's probably a rare medical condition or something that is not preventable. Right. Um, but what is largely preventable are the are the bits of data that we don't have information right. about, and that's the unspecified cause. Uh, and and I can't I can't help fill in the gaps there. Um, and what would be great is if we knew 
this was a private was, vehicle, this was, was a truck, say, this yeah. was a bus, yeah. this was a delivery vehicle. It says, like, that one says sport utility station wagon, and the next one doesn't seem to have information. No. Right. Would you be able to Passenger out, vehicle, like, we can get things like taxi cab. So taxi cabs tend to be very often a big part of it. Um, but that's just probably the volume of taxis that we have. You should know that every new bus that has been ordered um, starting about three years ago through the next batch of buses all has much improved visibility for the operator on the sides, in the front, oh, in the good. rear, mm -hmm. everything like that. Yeah, and you can really see that on the newer buses. They've got mirrors that are further out. Um, that's, that's a great mitigating factor. Uh, I can't speak to what our taxi cabs are doing to, to mitigate uh, injuries. Is, does the uh, data um, break out e-hail like Uber and uh, you know, I think they would just fall under taxi, right? Because they have to register as a taxi in the city. So it, it won't tell me the difference. Uh, I would expect that we would, and I, I can explore this more, um, but I would expect that we would see a spike in, uh, in taxi related collisions over the last few years. And again, I'm missing most of 2017's data. Um, and when did, in, in Kaling, really came into its own around, what, 2015? Yeah. So it would only have about a year and a half's worth of data. I, I think you're exactly right when it comes to Uber, Lyft, and Vias versus Yellow Cabs. You're gonna see a lot more of those. Yeah, and I can't, right, and, and so we can't um, yeah. see that right now, but if I can get an updated data set, um, I could, I can investigate that. It's not something that I've looked into. But, but one consideration is that I think the Ubers and the Lyfts tend to be more likely to be SUVs, which, statistics are now telling us are responsible for the increase nationally in uh, pedestrian deaths. Yeah, because they don't have the visibility. They don't have the visibility and they also have Breaking the, the, the distance, wide, yeah. The, the large front. Which yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, pick a, pick a reason that an SUV is bad in the city, right? right, right. Um, and then mix them with, with bikes. Uh, right. so, so I think that that is probably borne out in the data, but I would have to investigate that first. Snip right corner that tells me just don't get anywhere on your yeah. bike at 8 o'clock on a Wednesday. Right. So yeah. this is this is basically showing that, you know, it follows essentially what you would expect, which is that, you know, during rush hour, people get hurt. Um, that's when the most cars and bikes mix together. Uh, and there's very few people on the road at 3 a.m. It's not getting dark, so the visibility, yeah. but it's not quite dark, so maybe they don't have their lights on. Right, right. And uh, and actually, so let me flip over here real quick to the original work. Oh, whoops, not that one. Uh, if I work over here, I tried to see if there were any like related time trends. And you can see that that I, I parsed the data using time like four different ways, five different ways. And there's not really a consistent uh, uh, trend other than that, you know, people bike more in the summer, uh, especially, well, actually in the fall, really. You look at August, September, and October <coughs> is really when we have the most uh, issues with injuries in, uh, in CB7. But other than that, I it's don't... It's interesting, it's the end. Yeah. The fall is when it starts getting dark earlier. Yeah. When you get a, yeah, a, and, a peak um, late late in the day or mm -hmm. actually Rich, eight o'clock it starts getting darker earlier on june 22nd <laughs> yeah no, but we, i've seen that the, the fall in the fall months we're getting more crashes it's still warm but it's dark yeah yeah and, and that that's pretty expected right that's the seasonality of it but nothing else really makes a lot of sense from a, a time trend perspective so what this kind of tells me is that whatever we've been doing hasn't been changing how how bikes and cars are interacting in a substantial enough way uh, that we would see it uh, from a timeline perspective. Do you have, does your chart show incidences, because I think that's the word you, you've used, on streets with protected bike lanes versus those without? Uh, it, it does, but it doesn't separate those two. Uh, and I, I can spend a little more time doing that, but uh, that requires For another meeting, a little more, yeah. Very, that'd be yeah. Interesting. yeah. Be very helpful. Yeah. yeah, and what's also interesting is we know, uh, and I think this data goes from July of 2012 to the present. So Amsterdam Avenue, the protected bike lane, came in in the middle of it. Right. And yeah. the DOT showed a little bit of the before and after, mm -hmm. but we could do a lot more. And there have also been other street design changes. Like Westland Avenue well. um, was redone. Yeah. So we can. 
if I could get I timelines when those yeah, things happened, it would enough, it, right. it would be. But I don't I don't know where to gather the data, so I no, might ask. Get that. Do, do you have might, time right after this meeting? Yeah. Go take Let's it talk. Easily, Cody. Yeah. Because yeah. um, I'm, I'm like I'm happy to do additional analysis. This is just sort of as far as I got without knowing what you. Careful what you wish for. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. She can get you one. Okay. Great. Okay. Oh, we oh. Some of the week we get to. Yeah. Should we break and I'll get you up to speed? Yeah. Sounds great. Uh, good. Okay. Okay. You said you have this on the web. Yeah, it's on the web. Um, I'll. Uh, I've, I've been on an email with Howard, and I'll just send the link. No for it. The, um, thank you very much. Um, we hope to see you again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so any uh, slide back then? Um, the, the only thing under new business is the um, loading zone project. And a bunch of us went out and looked for spots for loading zones. And we have to figure out a way to coordinate that and put it into a document for the Transportation Committee to look at and hopefully approve at our next meeting. So we can have a five minute discussion and we'll be out of here on how we should go about doing that. Does anyone have any ideas on how we should coordinate all the work we each of us has done independently? So I'm a little scared of having 10 different reports that use different methodologies. And I think by all of us doing this, and Howard, we were talking at the beginning of the meeting, That's what we're I came up with three principles. Number one was most important factor is safety. And we should make sure that we're not putting loading zones in a way that's going to block pedestrian visibility into oncoming traffic. Number two is fire hydrants. If we can put loading zones right next to the fire hydrants, they're that much more accessible for the trucks to get legal? into and get out of. No, not in the street. Not in, but, but just adjacent. Adjacent. Doesn't doesn't yeah, that, sure. Doesn't that presuppose that whoever is doing that is not going to block the fire that's hydrants? Know, yeah. So the irony that I find is that I think we're better off having trucks parked in in front of fire hydrants than double parked. Because, fires are not that common. Yeah, it's yeah. extremely rare that we have fires, yeah. and it's yeah. very common that we well, have crashes. We're injury, but we're not going to change that. Parking spots, so they presumably will park in the empty parking spot rather than by the hydrants. And then maybe they yeah. use the hydrants. Yeah. And number, like my, so so my principle number like, three is if you've got brownstones on one side of the street, big buildings, this is for West End, not mm -hmm. Central Park West, put it near the big buildings because yeah. they're more likely to get delivered. Yeah. So I think if you go with those three principles, I did then, as well. then great. Then it's a matter of just putting and down and addresses. A block, a block that has an active bus stop on it, I did not include for a loading zone because that would not that would have been ridiculous for that side of that street. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So Same, like I, 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 I where 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 I did was Central Park, the M10. Yeah. I just did. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So and I tried to put it by large apartment buildings. Um, and that sort of so for your first point about not blocking pedestrian visibility, I think I asked this in the email I sent, but I assume that means like you don't want it near the end of the block, right? right. You want it sort of mid block, right? Yeah, but it's okay to be near the beginning of the block. So mm -hmm. on West End Avenue, yeah. if you're thinking about the east side of the street, which goes northbound, yeah. um, it's okay to be south on the south, south side. Yeah, it's yeah. not okay to be on the north side. Yeah. So if you're on the northeast corner, you're good. If you're on the southeast corner, you're bad. Okay. I think those are great principles. Yeah, I, I just want to push back a little bit on it. You were saying don't, Andrew, you were saying it's don't, don't put a um, uh, loading zone. Either that or any block that has a bus stop. Uh, well, the blocks that I it's saw had fairly long bus yeah, stops kind of um, used up with maybe a third of the side of the block. So in order to, um, and they weren't always in front of big. And there's also a hydrant, presumably. On yes, the there place. were hydrants on that block too. It would have left virtually nothing oh, for parking. Because I did Central Park West from the 86 and 96. Very different, and, but okay. And uh, uh, maybe on where there was a bus <laughs> stop, half maybe half the block or less was the bus stop, and there were double yeah. double park UBS. And, and, and then were there the hydrants on that block? I don't think so. There was, it was cars. Are you probably going to the UPS? Well, yeah. they're, they're going to park wherever they choose to park. Yeah, right. Right. The, national, the, the national brands, you know, they're the not point they have no, no place to go. Ken, are you keeping these or shall I bring them to the full board next week? Um, we'll see. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Because people need to get on the bus. Um, they've blocks. actually spaced out on some routes, bus stops, and I think the ultimate goal is to have them every three, not every two blocks, yeah. because um, it's, it's too frequent a stop and right. it slows down the bus, which well, is already slow. Um, but eight, in, eight, some, eight, in some in some neighborhoods where there's a large amount of elderly citizens, they're a little reluctant to space them out yet. And the ele and there are no elevators to have the yeah. Right. There's also a paradox when you're on the bus, it seems that there's a bus stop every block and you're yeah. looking for a bus. It's like right. 10 blocks is the bus I, I stop. I think for every three months. <laughs> I think too. And, you know, speaking of like not eating one every block, you know, when I talk to we the don't. UPS guys, I know you talk to them too. He was like, yeah, you don't need one every block. Like, you can park there and you can, they can walk away. They the won't, though. They won't. Just like if there's a loading zone across the street, they'll still double park on the other side. Well, this, we, if we put the, the park in the loading zones and then have some enforcement, well, maybe we'll have a yeah. Central Park West well, is a very different place, animal. You don't have buildings on one yeah, side. Right. right. <laughs> very different animal. Just also, as an, I also looked at removing two parking spots um, by each hydrant, and I thought that would be sufficient. And how much approximately are you allowing for that? Like 11, 12 foot spot? I don't know. Isn't that the average right. vehicle? I think it is. Well, the, the UPS guy I talked to, and you talked to too, um, said three spots. Yeah. Unless but it's if it's adjacent, adjacent to a hydrant, one. that's why I did all adjacent yeah. hydrants so you pretty much minimize the loss of spots. How do we, how do we want to put this I just together? created a Google Doc, and I'm sending it to the two of you. Do you want oh. to distribute it to everyone, or should I just? I'll send it to the committee. What are, so committee. what are the standards for inputting your data? That's, let's try to get that down and we're, we're set. Um, just to give you an idea of how I worded my, um, the way I did it is there's a hydrant on the block and I would remove, I would turn the two spots north or south of the hydrant. Yeah, I put south of the hydrant or, yeah, or that's how I did words it. of that to that nature. Um, That's a really good way to put do it. No, on some I put bus stop, um, on some I there's a driveway, I said north of driveway because okay. Park West Village has a big driveway. I so think most of the blocks you can identify the spots by uh, or fire the building number too. Or the building number, yeah. yeah. Maybe it was just where I did it was very easy to do by hydrants. So we'll all input it into the Google Doc. Um, Rich or I will, or someone will um, make it all consistent, and then we'll circulate it and talk about it at our next meeting. Is, is yeah. it a map to Google Doc? Or no, is it no. A, just no. I, the way I did it was I took West End. I had from 72nd to 86. So I did a line for 85 to 86, 84 yeah. to 85, 83 to 84. And then for each one, I said in front of 522, so 522 West End Avenue towards 85th Street, or in front of 515, or behind Hydrant between 505 and 515. Behind Hydrant is not good word. It's yeah, no, north. I see north or Please, south, south or north. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't, they, shouldn't they usually be like, the like, yeah. if you're using like behind her, shouldn't they usually be in front of the hydrant so they can like pull in? So north, north or south. Or south. Well, right. I mean, mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. think no, it's they should be, the truck opens onto the hydrant area. So right. If you're going south. northbound, then right. it should be north of the hydrant. Right. Assuming you can do that. Yeah. There are some streets where it's well, right. But yeah. like that would be the idea. Yeah. Right? Yes. So yeah. so the rear of the truck right. would the be rear yeah. of the truck. The would be, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But I always choose north or south of the hydrant. For consistency. Any other it's not gonna work. <laughs> Concerns. Um I'll just mention that I counted the number of between eighty six and eighty and ninety six. I counted the number of units that are on my block in apartments, and there are 1,460. How'd you do that? How did you do units. that? I just, I went to, uh, what is it, Street Easy? Uh, and uh, I went oh, to each, each building. building. Wow. And wow. I added them up. You really yeah. and <laughs> it, it took like 10 minutes. <laughs> and, right. um, and so we have almost 1,500 dwelling units getting packages in yeah. this day and age, and not one loading zone. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you, there's a whole block of loading zone in front of the Trump Hotel. <laughs> you got a whole block. That's more like a taxi stand. Yeah, so that's not a loading zone. Are, are you talking about drop off pickup? Are you talking about the access from Central Park West? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. yeah. the building goes through Broadway, too. Yeah. Central Park Hotel, that's a different side. Robert A. Snurds building? Yeah. No, they don't let people. No, they don't. I don't know how they got that. Can we have the um, resolutions to John 
Um, Rich uh, took the Rich minutes, actually. Rich, so. can you get the minutes to John? Can you just send them to us, back. and then we'll forward them to John, so we, we usually have a picture. Wow, that's a quick turnaround. Well, because we're next Tuesday is our board meeting. All the minutes. All the stuff that happened previously. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're set. I think that's it. Thanks, okay. everybody. Well, nice plan, Dave. And I have an announcement. Um, sorry. Our for the DTC, um, President Blackman's previous employer, and the point of Rick Leary, he was the acting CEO of the current CEO. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is just like now about this afternoon. Are you walking? Yeah. Roberta, should we turn this thing down for overnight? Yes, I think we should. should. Turn it off or just?